there was this one time that I babysat. The baby was one at the time. I have done a few others, but this one was the creepiest. I was a friend with the baby's mom, and I was just visiting. She needed to run some errands and ask if I can stay and look after the baby. I said, sure, mainly because she had already put him into bed and it shouldn't be any work at all. This was around 7pm. So she left, and about 15 minutes later, I heard a thump. Now, both of their rooms are next to each other. And my friend has her cat locked up in her room because I have allergies to the cat. Anyway, I just assume it's the cat and continue to watch TV in the living room. Then, five more minutes went by and I heard another smaller thump. So I went and checked on the cat first. I know, it's kind of a bad move, but I was thinking logically. If it was the cat and I figured if I calmed it down, it would stop acting out and not wake up the kid. Well, I opened up the door and the cat is asleep on my friend's pillow. At first I thought the little jerk was just pretending or something and while staring at the cat, I heard the thump again, but this time, it's clear that it's coming from the other room where the kid is. I immediately freaked out thinking the kid fell out of his crib or something, and before I could even close my friend's door. The cat freaked out and hid under the bed and the kid in the next room started to cry. Which definitely made me feel that he did fall, so I shut the door and went to the next room. I opened the door quickly and he's standing up in his crib, crying. I felt relieved that he didn't fall and just went to calm him down. Now mind you, for some reason, the electrical doesn't work so well in his room. The light switch doesn't work, so you have to turn on the floor lamp by hand. So, I'm in a dark room with a crying baby. It then dawned on me. What the hell was making that noise? So I turned on the light and looked around. Her closet is open and some stuff seems to move around, but nothing that looked like it fell several times or anything like that. So I closed the closet. This is mainly because the kid was crying while staring at the closet, and being the horror movie geek I am, I was like, okay, I have seen this many times. Time to close the closet. He seemed to have calmed down, and it took me about 5 minutes to get him back to sleep. I left the light on and kept the door cracked open so I can keep an ear out but not wake him myself with the TV. Anyway, that lasted about 10 minutes. Then I heard another thump noise. I got up and peeked in. The kid is still asleep, so I opened the door some more and the closet is open. Now, it's a sliding door closet which isn't as creepy as a walk-in closet with an actual door, but closets in general are creepy especially at night. Anyway, my first instinct was to run, but I man up and went to check out the closet to see what could have opened it or whatever and nothing. I just told myself, maybe it's a mouse, or a big mouse that can open the closet door. So like I said, I closed it up and checked on the kid, and still left the light on and went back to the living room. Not even 5 minutes passed by and he started crying, and there was no noise this time so I figured maybe it was just a normal baby cry. Like the light was bothering him or he peed or something. So I went in again. This time, the closet is only open a little bit, even though I have closed it. I'm extremely freaked out. So I texted my friend telling her to get the help back home. After that, I went towards the closet door and closed it again. My hand reached out for the edge and then I heard a small thump. Then one of those baby car toys that have the siren sound effect goes off in the closet. I open it up slowly and there it was, just going off. The kid is still crying his head off and I know for damn sure that his toy was not in the closet so I took it out, put it away and closed the closet door. I put the kid back to sleep and waited in the room with him. 
He didn't go back to sleep but I could tell that he tired himself out with the crying fit that he had. He laid there staring at me, almost like get me the hell out of here stare. I felt uneasy in that room, like someone or something was watching me and was pissed off, especially from the area where the closet was. So after about 15 minutes of waiting in the room, I stood up and started to head out. Then, the light turned off, which is odd since you have to turn it off manually since the wall switch doesn't work. I figured the bulb blew out or something, so I woke over using what little light the night light offered me as a guide towards the lamp. After I got to the lamp, I heard the closet door sliding open. I don't think I've been so scared in my life, and my instincts kicked in to turn on the light. And I fell for the switch on the damn lamp to turn it on, hoping it would. And thank god it did. Looking back, I was both relieved and creeped out that the bulb didn't burn out and that it somehow turned off by itself. Anyway, the light was back on and I turned around slowly. And luckily, nothing or rather I didn't see anything there. I grabbed the kid, shut the closet for the last time shut the door room behind me and held him in the living room till his mom got back. At first she was pissed that I took him out of his crib and that he was awake. But I told her that she needed an exorcist or someone to bless her house because things are not okay there. I don't really think she believed me. She said she noticed some small things happening but nothing to that effect. That was almost a year ago and apparently nothing that drastic happened again. Weird stuff happens to me and around me often. I've been told I was a magnet for these things before, so I'm not sure if whatever happened was because I was there or maybe I brought it with me or activated it or whatever. They did do a prayer or some kind to try and bless the house. Hopefully, that will help. I used to babysit for a family that had two boys, one 10 and one 12. They were a lot more easier to take care for than you hear boys those age are. They played a lot outside in the backyard. They even have a full tree house that they spend a lot of time in. A lot of times when I was over there babysitting, they spent a lot of time just playing there. There were even times when their parents would let them camp out in the tree house. They had done it a few times when I had babysat for them, normally in the summer. In those instances, I only had to go and check up on them every so often. This took place during a pretty hot summer. The kids were all excited about sleeping out in the treehouse. Their mom and dad had told me that it will be alright. I just had to go check on them from time to time. I tended to always do this, including after they had gone to sleep. You know, just to be safe. So I went back and forth several times. The boys were staying up late, reading comics and just being boys. When I went out to check them around 11 o'clock, finally, they had fallen asleep. I turned off the light they had and went back to the house. On the way back though, I paused just for a moment. There was a light on the second story of the house. It wasn't that unusual on its own, but as I was walking back toward the house, I saw the light turned off. This wasn't just a case of my eyes playing tricks on me either. I mean, the light flipped off immediately after I got to the bottom of the tree. I knew what I saw. I wasn't sure what to do first, but I took out my cell phone and called 911. After that, I climbed back up into the treehouse. I turned on the light quickly. I woke up the boys but I didn't tell them what I had seen, but only they would hear police sirens and not to worry about it. The police arrived and I watched them from the treehouse as they went in. An officer also came over to the treehouse and indicated to us that it was okay to come down from the tree. I watched again as cops came out of the house with a man in cuffs. They had found him, hunkered down in the boys room closet holding a knife. I don't know if he was waiting for them, 
and I don't want to think that he was waiting for me. Maybe it was just there to rob the place. All I know is, I'm glad I saw the light switched off. Okay, this one is hella creepy. I'm a regular babysitter. I was babysitting my mom's best friend's nieces. They are age 6 and 9. So the younger one also gets tantrums that fit the description of an exorcism. She has this condition with her legs and arms, so she can't bend them all the way like we can normally. She's extremely violent and gets pissed off easily. So, parents basically don't give a crap about the kids and gave me like $200 just for food and candy for them, plus $100 for babysitting overnight. So here I am, babysitting the kids, and the younger one starts picking up the dog. And the dog bit her lightly as if to say, Dude, leave me alone for a sec. And she got pissed off. She started hitting the dog, and I immediately got the dog away from her. And she started jumping on my back and hitting my sides with her feet. I got pissed off, so I push her off and put her on the sofa and say, If you're not sitting in the exact same spot when I come back, I'll call your parents. And she looks genuinely scared and promised to stay. I went to let the dog out in the yard and heard a small giggle and ran to the sofa to scold her, but she's there, just reading a book. And it looks like she hasn't moved. And from there, I already started thinking about ghosts. But I, of course, tried to blow it off and say it was her or the wind or maybe it was just me. So I forgot all about the open door and I went to the kitchen and ordered the pizza and felt something tugged my hip and looked down to find nothing there and just brushed it off again and went out to get the dog. When I got to the door to the yard, I saw it was closed and locked and the dog is standing there looking extremely terrified. Now I thought, okay, definitely it is a ghost. Because the yard is childproof, or else the psycho kid will run out all the time. I let the dog in and pretended not to be scared shitless. The older girl is playing with her guinea pigs in their room, and the younger one all of a sudden becomes sweet and cuddles up to me with her covers. She asked me to read to her and eventually falls asleep. I watched TV for a while until I saw something run past me out of the corner of my eye. There's nothing there, but... I assume it's the older girl, so I went up to check on her. She was sleeping on their small sofa in their room. Then all of a sudden, I heard the loudest piercing scream from downstairs and the older girl also wakes up and saw me in her room. She yells for her sister as we both ran downstairs. When we got down there, the smaller girl was crying, saying someone pulled her hair and started fighting with her older sister saying it was her. And I picked her up and called her parents telling them to get home now because something is in the house and it's evil. They're drunk and obviously cannot come home so I called my mom's best friend and told him to come pick us up. We waited around 5 to 8 minutes until a huge knock comes from the door. I know it wasn't him because he would knock 3 times because that's what we always do to let each other know that it is us even at home. So I am terrified, trying not to let it show in front of the girls. And one of the girls started screaming at the top of her lungs, pointing towards the window. The older and I looked, and they're both crying because there's a freaking face staring at us, smiling. And I ran as fast as I can with one girl on my hip and another one in my hand, and we ran upstairs. I instructed them to take all of the covers and pillows and make a fort to protect us while I cover up the windows and push their tiny sofa in front of the door. I heard the dog outside the door barking, so I let it in quickly. As I do so, I glanced towards the window, and the face was gone. While we were huddled up under the covers, waiting for my mom's friend, I had a lot of time to think, and I kept thinking that. I read somewhere that demons take the shape of children to lure them in their prey, and I think that was the giggle I heard. 
eventually the friend arrives and we ran downstairs and they spent the night at my house with my mom and her friend I babysat them at my house ever since then every single time though I'm scared as hell I know it sounds bizarre and trust me I wouldn't believe the story myself if I heard it but I am getting paranoid just writing it here and I wish it was just a made-up story but it's not It seems to be the biggest sources for scary stories on YouTube seems to be pizza delivery and babysitting. Well mine, sort of the combination of the two. I was babysitting for a family that I had been doing this for several years. They always paid me very well and gave me extra money for pizza for our dinner. So a couple of hours after the parents left and once the kids had done all of their homework, I went ahead and ordered the pizza. When the pizza guy arrived, it was a different guy than I had ever seen before. He was a bit awkward at first, not really seemingly to acknowledge I was there, just giving me a really creepy look. After a moment, he looked over at the car and told me that he had gotten the wrong pizza. So he went over to the car, grabbed another pizza, and came to deliver it. He gave me the pizza, I paid him and he left. When I opened the pizza, I noticed that I actually had the wrong pizza. I assumed that the guy was just a new employee and had made a mistake. I called the pizza parlor to let them know, and they said they would send out a new pizza. About half an hour later, the kids were getting pretty hungry and frustrated. But finally, the pizza came. It was the same pizza guy. He apologized and we exchanged pizzas. He was about to leave before I checked the pizza, but once again, it was the wrong pizza. I called the guy back and he apologized, but now I was getting irritated. He went back, got another pizza, confirmed that it was the right pizza and then he left. I was bugged by the guy but was happy that I finally was able to get the kids fed. Halfway through eating the pizza, the doorbell rang. I checked on it and it was the pizza guy. He told me that I had overpaid for the pizza, which I know I hadn't. He gave me a $10 and I just took it and he left. He didn't come back for the rest of the night, which was great. I put the kids to bed and read until his parents came home. Then I got into my car and drove home. About a couple of hours later, there was a knock at the door. I was still awake because I was studying for a big test. When I answered it, it was the police. Someone had broken into the house I was babysitting for, claiming he was my boyfriend. I had to refute the story and identify who it was. I don't think it comes as any surprise to anyone reading this that it was the pizza guy. He didn't know that I was only the babysitter and assumed that I lived in the house. He tried to get inside the house late at night and got caught. When questioned, he was claiming, I am your daughter's boyfriend. Well, obviously, he went to jail. I honestly have no doubt that he kept screwing up on purpose in order to keep coming back to the house. I'm just so sorry for the family that I had babysat for I had to go through this. But regardless of what happened, I still babysit for them.